Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, still pretty warm out there, but uh, they say there's some rain and wind and all coming and uh, you know, maybe they'll cool things down a little bit. Uh, we are getting closer to the end of August, hard to believe, but uh, uh, headed towards September. I heard yesterday that uh, uh, Starbucks came out with all their pumpkin stuff so and other places around have as well. So uh, I know that kind of makes us think fall, and I, I love fall. It's cooler in the fall, leaves change. Uh, football, hopefully we'll have some football this fall, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, well, we're going to do a short three-day devotional from the Version app. They have all kinds of different resources in there that you can do, and, and this is one of them. This one's from Tony Evans. It's called Committed to God. And I think it's just kind of a good bridge. We're, my plan is after the first of the week, I want to start into one on uh, wisdom. Uh, I'll be looking at Proverbs. As I've told uh, told you and told you in the church, we're going to start a series of sermons on James, focusing on wisdom, uh, starting on Sunday. And so uh, bouncing off that, we're going to go to Proverbs on these devotionals in between. So that we'll kind of link the two together, and, and hopefully uh, we can get some help in these uh, these days where we need wisdom, we need wisdom badly. It's really a dangerous time we're living in, and there's so many different uh, opinions and views, and people are putting stuff out there that isn't necessarily true, and we need to be aware of that, and we need to live in truth. Uh, Jesus is all about truth. Lies come not from the Lord, but from uh, Satan himself. He's the father of lies, and so uh, we need to know what truth is, and we we find that by digging into God's word, and so hopefully we can have some find some help in uh, figuring out what truth is uh, by digging into uh, actually these two books of wisdom, James in the New Testament and Proverbs in the Old Testament, and see what the Lord has for us in that. Uh, but today I want to start with this one. It's just a simple, uh, straightforward. Actually, like I said, it's, it's three days. It's called "Committed to God" uh, from. Uh, uh, Tony Evans, a uh, great African-American preacher. I've always uh, uh, just really enjoyed reading his books, hear him speak. I, I heard him speak several years ago at a book convention that I went to that was uh, such a powerful uh, word that he brought there. And uh, I, I got a, a cassette of it and listened to it over and over again because it was so helpful to me. Well, we're going to dig into this, and this it's it's book it's based in the book of Revelation, and uh, it uh, uh, it starts with the church, and uh, well, it's actually all about the church in Sardis, and I'll talk a little bit about that today, and then we'll pick it up from there tomorrow. But uh, Revelation three, and I'll, I'm going to read to you the whole section on on the church at Sardis. It says this to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. It's interesting. It says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Uh, that's a dangerous place to be, dangerous place to live. But then it says, strengthen what remains and is about to die. And those are these things that appear to be alive but are dead. It's those things that are about to die, that are almost there. And I sort of wonder in our culture if there isn't a lot of that uh, right now where our culture is about to die and we need to strengthen what is alive. Go back to that. Um, he said, I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. We need to do what the Lord wants us to do and live the way the Lord wants us to be. And that's part of why we're going into this series on, on wisdom, because we need to seek the Lord's wisdom in all of this. Well, back to verse 3. It says, Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. Uh, but if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Uh, one of the things I failed to mention at the beginning is I, I wanted to dig into the Scripture first. 
uh, before we go to the devotional, because I, some of these devotionals are, seem to be better to go first to Scripture and then to the devotional. Sometimes they're better to go to the devotional than the Scripture. But uh, uh, today I, I wanted to start with that about Sardis, because it gives us a little bit of background to what the Lord had to say to, to Sardis in Revelation 3. And and so um, uh, kind of some hard-hitting words here for us, and, and I think it's an important word for us as we're in this world that is, uh, we're struggling right now. We're, we're in danger of... Uh, going the wrong way and and we need again it draws us back to to wisdom but, but let's move to the to the devotional again this is tony evans it says a man was visiting his neighbor's pig farm i love this story a man was visiting his neighbor's pig farm one day when he noticed something unusual about one of the pigs it seemed to have a limp as it walked so the man moved closer to get a better view and he did he saw that the pig had a prosthetic leg now, he had n never seen anything like that before. I I've never seen anything like that. A, a pig with a prosthetic leg. You know, a pig with an artificial leg. It, he it says he had to find out why on earth he had one. So he went over to the farmer and asked him about this unusual situation. Farmer just smiled and explained how one day his granddaughter was walking in front of a tractor. And the tractor was about to hit her when the pig jumped in and knocked her out of the way. Can you imagine that? A pig saving uh, his granddaughter. On another occasion, the farmer continued, his grandson was drowning and the pig jumped into the water and saved him. Wow, again, just an amazing event. This pig is just just really uh, something almost Superman, uh, saving his uh, uh, grandsons, grandson and granddaughter. The man was awed at the heroic feats of this pig. He smiled and told the farmer that he understood why he would want to help this pig, who no doubt sustained injuries in the rescues. Uh, you know, pretty, 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 really quite a pig to be doing all that. Farmer just chuckled and replied, oh no, the, po the pig didn't get uh, injured at all. I just didn't have the heart to eat him all at one time. <laughs> didn't have the heart to eat him all at one time. Uh, <laughs> Tony Evans says, things are not always as they appear. Uh, that's true. <laughs> we look at certain situations and we think they appear one way. Uh, when actually they're they're not that way at all. They're, they're something altogether different. And uh, while that's funny, there's a lot of humor in that. There's a lot of truth as well. He goes on, they are not as clearly definable as they initially look. That's why the message to the church at Sardis, found in the book of Revelation, is as it is. The church, located just 30 miles south of Thyatira, in the same general vicinity of Asia Minor, suffered from a false sense of security. They They had had rested their hopes on what they could see, but what they saw, uh, had rested their hopes on what they could see, but what they saw was not all there was to be seen, as we will discover. Again, such a dangerous thing to, to be in that place where you think you see one thing, but reality, truth, is in another place. I'm going to talk about that on Sunday. Sardis is a city built on a high mountain, where they had constructed an acropolis that made the city appear to be impregnable. It looked as if there was no way anyone could defeat this city on a hill simply because of all the trouble you would have to go through in order to do so. Uh, you know, it just seemed like it was a place that could not be broken into, could not be, uh, you know, it, it just was impregnable. It was it's no way. It, it was completely defended. Says, Yet on two occasions, the city of Sardis was overthrown, once in 549 B.C. by Cyrus, and then again in 218 B.C. by Antilogus. The, the way both armies did it was to come in at night during the most unsuspecting time and hit Sardis with a surprise attack. But wouldn't nighttime be a naturally vulnerable time, and therefore wouldn't the city put out its guards, especially then? You would think so. But the reason why the attacks were able to be successful is that Sardis had gotten so comfortable with their own sufficiency and their own security that they assumed nothing could happen to them. Uh, again, a dangerous place. And we're talking about being committed to God, fully committed, not just part of the time, but all the time. 100%. 100% of the day, 100% of the night, 100% always. What was true of Sardis the city became true of Sardis the church which is why Jesus opens up his message to the church of Sardis with this reminder of himself. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, Revelation 3.1. The number seven is the number of completion. What Jesus means by referring to himself as having the seven 
uh, spirits of God is that he contains the complete work of the Holy Spirit. The reason why this is so important is to notice that, that the root of the problem of these Christians in Sardis was that they had gotten so self-sufficient in their own minds that they did not feel they needed the Holy Spirit anymore. Uh, they could do everything on their own, which is a very dangerous place to be, like I said. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit. We need God's help, uh, especially in these days. And, and again, that's why we're going to do this series on wisdom. We need God's wisdom. We need his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us every day uh, to stay on, uh, you know, where we're, we're being careful, where we're being, uh, you know, watching for uh, the enemy at work, where we're staying focused on God's word, we're staying focused in, on the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need this so badly, and, and that's just where this, uh, uh, you know, this devotional ends. This is God has a great plan for your life. Your commitment to him will open up that path. Uh, we need to be committed fully to the Lord. And then, you know, other things can come along second or third or fourth. We've talked about this before. We, but we must be fully committed 100% to the Lord, to his truth. And we just need to keep looking to him. Well, let's uh, let's pray together before we go today. Lord, thank you for, for this word. Help us to be fully committed to you, 100% committed, because things aren't always as they seem to be. As this humorous story with the pig shows us that sometimes things can be false. We, we can be led down a path of comfort as the people of Sardis were and and ended up being taken over. Lord, we, we, we don't want that. We don't want to be led down the wrong path. We want to be in the middle of your will. We want to be led by your spirit, empowered by your spirit to, in all that we do so that we are 100% following your your lead, your truth. That's what we need to live for, not not what the world tells us, not what we read on on social media, not what, what, you know, maybe others tell us, friends tell us or whoever, but we need to hear from you. We need your spirit at work in our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord. Help us as a nation. Uh, we, we need your spirit. We need you to bring unity as there's continues to be more racial issues. Lord, bring healing. Uh, just help us, Lord, in this time of the, the coronavirus, uh, the pandemic, Lord, we just ask for your uh, intervening in all of this, Lord. Uh, bring healing to our nation. Bring healing to, to those dealing with the coronavirus, Lord. Be with doctors, nurses, first responders. Uh, be near to them, Lord. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Be with our leaders, our president, our governor, our local leaders, Lord, as they lead us. Lord, again, we need your wisdom. They need your wisdom. Help us to look to you in these difficult days. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. We'll be back tomorrow with the second part of this uh, Committed to God uh, devotional from Tony Evans. Uh, you have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh,